Welcome to my overview of some of the plants that you can spot during each month of the year, as well as some of the wildlife that these plants can help support. If you've not seen part one yet, then make sure to go and check out that video as well, because that covers January to June. And also let me know down in the comments which of these wildlife species you're on the lookout for this year. Subscribe to Ferro Forest to keep learning about UK nature. With the huge variety of plants that appeared in part one, it might surprise you to know that we've got many more plants still to cover. I've created this video in combination with part one to give you an overview of how plants change throughout the year, which you can watch in just one sitting. But if you want reminders throughout the year of how nature varies across the UK, make sure to check out my 2022 printable calendar over on Etsy, which I've left a link for down in the description below. With that said, let's get started where we left off, with the start of July. As the middle month of the summer, and also the start of the second half of the year, July is a really important month for wildlife. As I said at the end of part one, summer is all about warmth and energy, and plants and animals are bulking themselves and their young up using the abundance of resources in preparation for the return of the colder months. With the average daily temperature across the UK reaching up to 17.6 degrees Celsius this month, this is the hottest month of our year, and so resources are plentiful. Although by this time of year, some of the early flowering plants, like snowdrops and bluebells, have already stopped flowering, there are still many more species starting to show themselves. Some examples of flowers to look out for are zigzag clover, teasel, tansy, hoary mullein, chicory, viper's bugloss, oxeye daisies, yarrow, and harebells. The variety of flowers is great for our pollinators, which are out in great forces. All of our native butterflies have either had their adult period of their life cycle by now, or for the majority of them, they're currently still in it. Bees and wasps are also out in large numbers, with the social species having thriving colonies that are bringing back food to the queen's ever-growing number of offspring. Around water bodies, you'll find a range of other invertebrates, like the common blue damselfly and the emperor dragonfly. However, it's not just flowers on plants you need to be keeping a lookout for at this time of year. Having been pollinated, the flowers of various species have started to die back and the fruits are ripening. The bright red berries of rowan trees are ready to be eaten by birds this month, spreading seeds so that the rowan trees can continue to grow in future generations. You may also spot other plants with unripe berries. Holly will start to produce small green berries at this point in the year, which over the coming months will slowly develop until they're ready and ripe to be eaten by birds. As we continue on through summer, we pass into August, where the average daily temperatures across the UK are still high at around 16.1 degrees Celsius. Now, August marks the end of the abundance of wildflowers that we've been seeing. Many of the flowers that started blooming earlier in the year have started to close up by now and are producing seeds to spread for the next generation to grow. However, there are still plenty of flowers that are out and about and will continue to flower through the rest of the summer, so there are still plenty of plants for you to see. One interesting sight to look out for in August is the roe deer rut. Rut is the term for the annual mating season that some mammals, including our deer, go through. Most of our deer rut in the autumn, but roe deer have an earlier mating season. Despite mating so early in the year, the female roe deer actually delays the time before her offspring starts developing inside her, so her young aren't actually born until May or June of the following year. You may spot deer and many other animals around hedgerows, foraging on various species of plants that are starting to develop berries. This time of year is well known to people who enjoy foraging from wild plants because the highly anticipated blackberries start to appear towards the end of August. Blackberries continue to grow as the seasons transition from summer to autumn, being at their tastiest in early September. The average daily temperature is now about 14 degrees Celsius, so the days are starting to become evidently cooler. Many of the flowers that were blooming have started to die back, although some still are around. Others yet still have to bloom and haven't flowered this year yet. Ivy is a distinctive plant that can be spotted across the UK. It's dark green, glossy leaves curled around tree trunks as it grows up into the canopy supported by the tree. In September, ivy begins to display its small yellowish green flowers, which show up in dome-shaped clusters called umbels. As one of the few plants that flowers later in the year, ivy is an important food source for many insects before they go dormant over the winter. Trees are also starting to spread their seeds at this time of year, so that they can be stored in the ground over winter and sprout into new trees next spring. Examples of this are the helicopter seeds that field maple and ash are producing. 
Trees like hazel have finished ripening their nuts, which means the rare hazel dormouse is able to start fattening up before its winter hibernation. Meanwhile, other trees, like silver birch and rowan, are starting to go through autumn tinting. A chemical within the trees triggers the base of each of their leaves to seal up, reducing the water that can reach the leaf and trapping all the other remaining chemicals within them. This gradually breaks down the leaves, causing their colours to change from green to the reds and browns that are characteristic of autumn. By the start of October, the leaves of trees that drop their leaves over winter should have started to fall. Continuing the trend that carries on for the rest of the year, the temperatures have dropped in October and are now 10.5 degrees Celsius. Being in the middle of autumn, the trees are now tinging the forest in a glow of gold and red as their leaves change colour and start to drop, exposing the bare tree branches. Many flowers have now died back, although a few are still clinging on. The human high teasel plant still has tiny purple clusters of flowers, although these will soon turn into brown seed heads over winter. Meanwhile, wild clematis will cover hedgerows in white flowers, which will turn into feathery white tufts that hold its seeds over winter. October is a good month for animals that are trying to find the last few berries as an energy store before they become dormant over winter. Mistletoe develops its white berries, which often attracts a mistle thrush who will ferociously guard it over winter. The green holly berries that have been existing in an unripened state will start to turn orange before ripening into bright red berries towards the end of the month. Our winter visitors, like field fairs and red wings, greatly appreciate this source of food as they arrive in the UK. By November, the average temperature has dropped to 8.7 degrees Celsius, and many of our species are hiding themselves away. They're either hibernating, trapped in a dormant state, or they've already passed away and have entrusted their future to the next generation. The end of autumn is approaching, and very few wildflowers are still remaining. Even the late flowering ivy has lost its flowers and is instead adorned by black clusters of fruit. However, with this food source still around, there is still wildlife to be seen. One particularly impressive sight at this time of year is the gathering flocks of starlings, which dance at dusk in groups that can number over a hundred thousand birds. These starling murmurations are a spectacle that attracts many bird watchers every year. As November passes into December, the last month of the year, winter has officially begun. There's still plenty to see in December, which you can find out more about during my winter wildlife walk video, which I published a few weeks ago. The average temperatures have now dropped to 5.3 degrees Celsius, and many of our species are hiding themselves away. But for some, this is the busiest time of the year. Foxes have begun looking for mates and can often be heard screaming to find each other in the middle of the night. Animals that are still out will be moving among the few winter flowering plants. Winter aconites will start to display their yellow flowers. Although not initially native here, these flowers have become naturalised and so are fully established in the UK. They're mostly found in the woodlands of southern England and have a good strategy flowering deep in the winter. The woodland canopy, while normally full of leaves and life, is currently bare. The thin branches don't stop the sunlight from being able to pass through the canopy and reach the woodland floor. Winter aconites have very little competition at this time of year to access this sunlight, as well as the nutrients in the surrounding soil to help them grow. If the winter is mild, then snowdrops may also start to show up, but otherwise you'll have to wait until January to see them. And that brings us full cycle back around to the start of the previous video. If you like this video and are interested in watching more detailed videos, then let me know because I'm considering creating a calendar series where I create a video for each month and cover in much more detail what's going on with the trees, flowers, birds, mammals and all sorts of other groups in those videos. Make sure to also check out my 2022 calendar over on Etsy and while you're waiting for next week's video, check out some of the other videos that I've got on my channel.